What's up everyone, it's your boy Norenbrad89 here continuing our Nightmare on Elm Street review series, but you know why I'm wearing this Jason shirt right now, because we are on to Freddy vs. Jason, and you all know that your boy Noren is going to be in Jason Voorhees' corner. That's my dog, that's my boy, I'm going to always be on his side, but today I'm here to talk about this absolutely fantastic film. Like, I adore this film, and this one like is the first Freddy film that I ever saw in theaters, Yeah, and the first Jason film, yes, that I ever saw in theaters, because I didn't and get a chance to see um, Jason X in theater. So this was the first Freddy and first Jason film that I ever got to see in cinema. So it holds a very, very special place in my heart. Today, you're going to hear the positives, the negatives, the rating, and then I'm going to send you all home. So let's do this. Roll it. <laughs> So yes, Freddy vs. Jason, 2003, man, this was such a fantastic time to be alive, especially if you're a horror fan and you're a fan of slashers, this was the two biggest icons in slasher history really going at it, you know what I mean? This was like just a titan. It was a titan versus match, and everybody was so excited, and this film actually came out in August of 2003, so it was my birthday uh, movie when my mom took me and my best friend, so this was a very big deal. This film calls back to many, many times as being a child where I like just re-watching it over and over and over. And yeah, this film really gave us as horror fans at that time, it just gave us everything we wanted. You know, it's literally just dumb fun, but it's absolutely the best kind of dumb fun. So let's kick it off with the positives right away is that I think Bringing these two titans together, I think, was fantastic. They really did a great job in terms of story-wise, in terms of bringing to, them to life on screen and having Robert England here. You know, a lot of people do hate the fact that it wasn't Kane Hodder that played Jason. That really doesn't bother me that much because he's not my favorite Jason. I know people wanted him because he's the most iconic, memorable Jason to a lot of people. But Ken Kersinger, I didn't, I think, did a fantastic job for what they asked him to do because they Jason they want him to portray in this one was more of a just very big huge lumbering like kind of like just a giant brick wall that Freddy has to go through that's the kind of Jason they wanted him to portray in this film and yeah man the kills in here are really cool like this one is just like I said it's a roller coaster ride of dumb fun and yeah Jason gets a lot most of the kills in this one which does make me happy that makes me very happy because Jason gets to show off like for real like I love specifically in general the scene in the cornfield really great that scene is just fantastic especially when you watch the special features and you find out the stuntman and how long he had to be set on fire and walking the track and just i can't imagine that like not being able to breathe wearing the jason suit the fire gel protective stuff and being set on fire and walking through a cornfield yeah it's really a sight to behold and like is one of the most epic scenes in any of this in any of the franchise be it jason or freddy's we also have an iconic cast that I think is really good. Like, I think they all do pretty good. We have Catherine Isabel in here. We have to talk about her. She's a horror gem, a horror icon and all that stuff. But even Lori, the, our lead actress who plays Lori, I think she does a great job. Also, Mark, the other character who plays um, oh, it's Will's best friend. I love Mark's character. I think he really cements the the certain scenes where he's talking about Freddy and when he's describing things or talking about his brother committing suicide that yeah Mark that character in specific really holds up this film and makes it a really good film in terms of the trauma and what is going on with the kids and how Freddy torments them and stuff like that Ritter I don't know about that that's this so uh, we'll talk about the negatives when we get some negatives there are some bad actors in this film but yeah there is a whole host of really good cast members I also like the music in this one because it's that early 2000s just like heavy metal rock like right in your face you know battle type music like it very much fits the tone of the film like I said this is a dumb fun hour and 38 minute film of just rock and roll action kills slasher gore and Freddy moments Jason moments and I really like the fact that they build it up to the fight it's kind of funny though I was watching this with my son and he was like when are Jason and Freddy gonna fight like when I want to see Freddy fight Jason. So they do kind of, they make you wait all the way to like that third act, you know, but I like the buildup, you know, they got to set the stage. They got to, you know, get the crowd warmed up and everything. You know, you got to have some starter matches before you get to the really big final match. So I like the fact that we have to wait till that final encounter. And when we get to the third act, do they deliver? It's Gora Plenty and Jason and Freddy tear each other up. They're stabbing each other, using each other's weapons, poking eyes out. It's just, it's really fantastic to see on screen. 
And I think this one's cool too because Ronnie Yu, he directed, they brought in a director who was very action oriented, knew how to shoot cinematography, knew how to shoot fight scenes and stuff like that and really brought a certain style to this film. You know, he might not have been so knowledgeable in a lot of the horror area with certain characters, but he knew these two icons. He knew the importance of them in pop culture and knew what people wanted to see on screen. And I really think this is a good, fantastic version of a versus film. You know what I mean? There's a lot of other ways you could have taken this. You know, you could have went more serious, more character development stuff. There's a lot of other, you know, when we talk about negatives, there are some things that they did miss out on that they tried to do in this film or, you know, but yeah, I think in, gen in general, Freddy versus Jason is a film that you might have had to be there. This might have been one of those films that you had to experience and be there at the time but man like I said was this a fantastic time to be a horror fan because oh it's just so glorious and like I said every time I rewatch this film it reminds me of that era that early 2000s when horror was just blowing up and people were loving it and this is like crazy to think about when I was watching it this time on the TV I was like this is Robert England's final performance as Freddy Krueger like that's the last time we saw him was in 2003 in cinema on big screens as Freddy Krueger so that's kind of wild to think about now let's talk about the mixed and negatives because this is like I said this is a bag of mixed and negatives there are some negatives with this film it isn't a perfect film like I said I do have rose tinted glasses when I do watch this film with some parts because I have such a kinship and it's so close to my heart because I love it, it takes me back to that time like I said heavy nostalgia but negatives yeah we have some bad actors in here namely Kelly Roland and Ritter. Ritter plays Will, who's it's one of the leads, so that kind of hurts the film. And Kelly Rowland, I think those two characters, yeah, they really do bog the film down because there's very there's certain scenes that they ask them to do certain stuff acting wise and they just aren't of that level at all so it really sticks out like a sore thumb especially when you stick them next to people like the our actor who plays mark and Lori and Catherine isabel those characters they just they're character actors and they're able to do certain things with limited amount of time and will and kelly Rowland, like their characters ritter and them they're not able to do that stuff we also have that bad early 2000s CGI, specifically that scene when, you know, that stoner scene, of course, when Freddy comes in as that like kind of worm slug thing and gets stoned with the bong. Like, yeah, that CGI does not age very well. Like, I... I can't remember and when seeing that in theaters. I think I was just laughing at how funny it was. Like, it was just a comical laughing moment. But yeah, when I see when I see it now and you watch it just over and over, you're like, oh, ooh, like, yeah, we pro probably should have went practical here. Like, it might have been a better idea to come up with something practical for that scene. One other huge negative with me is going to stick out like a sore thumb is that they make Jason Voorhees afraid of water. I dislike that part heavily. That's just a certain plot point in the story that I just can't stand, which is weird. I don't know why, because we've had Jason in multiple Friday the 13th movies He's attacked people in water. He's been underwater. He knows how to swim now. Like, it's just a thing. It's not that he's not afraid of water. Just erase that. That one part, that one plot point does make this film kind of stupid. But I know that happens. You could kind of argue that it happens in the dream world, that Freddy has a little bit more power over that, you know, Jason and what happens in the dream world. But yeah, having that plot point and me being a Jason Voorhees fan, that is definitely a one huge negative I have with this movie. But even mentioning those negatives, like I said, this is a film that I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy returning to. Every time I watch it, I love watching it with people, showing people for the first time. Because yeah, Freddy vs. Jason, this is one of those films that I would say is a key horror you know it's a planetary horror icon moment it's just a certain cements a certain time in horror and i love talking about it because it's very huge and this is a film that i find that a lot of people have a lot of nostalgia with like this because you know it is that first freddy krueger film or that first jason Voorhees film that a lot of people experienced in the theaters for the first time and stuff so yeah that's always going to stick close to my heart because of that reason but we have to talk about a rating because even with the negatives the positives we must weigh them against each each other and we have to talk about the rating freddy versus jason is gonna get a 7.5 out of 10 yes that's a very decent rating i really do like this film and like i said returning to it it sticks out the negatives but i could overlook a lot of them because of the positives that i enjoy just seeing these two titans go at it having that gory bloody third act a really good final girl and like i like the freddy we also have a must talk about a freddy krueger design that shows up for only about 30 seconds in this film the demon dream freddy and it's probably one of the coolest designs of freddy krueger we've ever seen but it only happens for about 30 
30 seconds. Thanks for sticking around with me all as we chatted Freddy versus Jason. Please let me know down below in the comment section how you feel about this film because these are just my thoughts and my opinions I would love to discuss with all of you. Please like the video. That definitely helps out the channel. Subscribe if you're new to the channel and have that notification bell poked so you're notified anytime I post a video. But you all know what's up. Most importantly, have a safe and happy day. Peace out.